multiplying by multiples of 10 and 100. Yep, this would be under multiplication. Multiplication. In other words, if you have something like this, let's just say 35 times um, 10 and 35 times 100. And then maybe let's do 35 times 30 and maybe 35 times 300, just for fun. In math, when you see multiplication with multiples of 10 or 100, it should make you smile because it really makes your life pretty easy. It's a, I mean, they're big numbers, but they're easy to multiply. And the book encourages you to write this down in somewhere here, and I don't know if you did this last year or not, you can tell me this. Uh, the book encourages you to, when it says, hang out the zeros. And I'll show you what that means. Uh, that means this. When you write this problem on your paper, write it as 35 times. And instead of putting the 10 directly under the 35, move it so that the 0 actually ends up out past the number like this. Okay, and the reason they want you to do that is simply this. Uh, you can just take that zero, you don't really have to do anything with it except just bring it straight down. And then you can multiply by this one over here, one times 35 is 35. Okay, same thing with the 35 times 100. You can write it as 35 times hang out both of the zeros. You can do that with ending zeros only. You can't do it anytime you feel like it. It's only with ending zeros. And these two ending zeros just drop straight down, and then you multiply by 35. Even if it was 35 times 30, you would take the 3, hang out that one zero, drop it straight down, and then 5 times 3 is 15, 3 times 3 is 9, plus 1 is 10. You get 1,050 for that answer. And this one over here, you can probably guess what you're going to get. I mean, guess what they're going to get with this one? Ryan? 10,500. Exactly. You'll drop your two zeros down. 5 times 3 is still 15. 3 times 3 is 9, plus 1 is 10. 10,500. When we get to long multiplication and there's not zeros there, then you have to do a whole lot of work. You got to keep everything organized. But when there's zeros there, um, it makes your life a lot easier. So let's say I've got uh, 245 times 800. Now that looks like it's going to be a pretty big problem. In the end, it will be, but it's not as hard as it might sound. Uh, you just need to take your 245. Where am I going to put the 8? Put it under the 5 and hang out those zeros. And it's really no more complicated than doing 245 times 8. Because you're just going to tack on those two zeros at the end. 8 times 5 is 40. 8 times 4 is 32 plus 4 is 36. 16 plus 3 is 196,000. Are you with me on that? Did you do that last year? Is this something not incredibly new? All right, we're good. Let me give you one, and we'll see if you actually got it. Here. Now, remember this. If you're given a problem that looks like this, because of the, anybody know what property of multiplication? Do we talk properties of multiplication? Because 9 times 7 is a 7, the same as 7 times 9. Is that problem, well, no. Yeah, what problem, what, what property is that, Ryan? Community. The community, which means it can move. Okay, it doesn't matter if the 400 comes first or last in the problem. You can still write it any way you want. And again, the strong suggestion is, is that you put the 37 on top so that you can just hang out the zeros there. I'm not so sure how many of you could do it the other way. Do you, could you do it if I, if I wrote it like this? 
I'm sure you probably did double digit multiplication before, but I don't know if that would. We haven't done it. No, yeah, no. Okay, so don't. Anytime you see a, a multiple of 10 or 100, make sure when you write it out, you put that number on the bottom with those zeros hanging out. And again, it's just as easy as bringing those down and then multiplying through. Sometimes 4 is 28, 12 plus 2 is. So I was going to give you one, wasn't I? Sorry. You try this one here. Um, 500 times 36. Raise your hand when you're finished. 